The internet. Some of us use it for consuming content, some of us use it for basic business duties, and then people such as myself provide services for the other two by means of programming. Nonetheless, technology has empowered us with the opportunity to have access to the internet at our fingertips and also to the comfort of our homes. Okay, okay, no more cheesy intros, let's get to the point. I'm pretty sure you've all seen this little guy around your house somewhere. The proper term for these guys is an ONT slash router, which most of the time means that it acts as a modem, allowing you to connect your network to the outer world via a fiber optic cable. It also acts as a router, allowing you to connect home devices to your network and let them communicate with each other. And finally, it provides a Wi-Fi access point to you and your family. For most people, this device would be great, and it is. That's why so many ISPs prefer to give one of these multi-purpose devices instead of three different devices. However, if you're more technical and also have free servers in your attic, it can get really annoying that some of the options on your router's interface, such as preferred DNS servers, etc., are blocked by default to prevent you from breaking your entire home network, which I've done in the past. For the past month now, I've been having issues with my internet connection where it would work fine for a couple of days and then randomly would just stop working. And I mean completely dead. Sometimes I would be able to load a one web page and then have to wait an obscene amount of time for the page to load, but most of the time it just times out. The last time it happened, I managed to run some tests in my network and so that for every 10 packets that my server would send, five of them would be lost which means a 50% packet loss. Obviously, I was annoyed, and every time this happened, I would ring up my internet service provider, and here's what they would say most of the time. You are at position three in this queue. Please wait to be connected. The problem is uh, now we are having a problem on the area, okay? We're having a massive affectation. Oh, okay. That's, that's affecting only the, the public IPs, okay? But don't worry, our technicians are working to fix it as soon as possible. An outage? Now that makes sense. In those cases, I just waited it out and lo and behold, my internet would come back. However, I was revising for my upcoming exams the other day and the internet died again. Oh, perhaps there is another outage. Let me call them quickly. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm just uh, checking all the configuration on, on this line, checking everything and as I just, as I just said, there is a lot of uh, latency on the line. Okay. Yes. It's having a lot of cuts, and I will let a test on, on it on this line. Okay, to check all the cuts and check if we need to send an addition to your house. Okay. Okay. Latency is the problem. I knew it. That 50% packet loss must mean that there's a problem with my router or the router on the other end. As later in the call, they clarified that the fiber connection is stable. Also, about seven days ago, I set up a simple Raspberry Pi with a couple of Docker containers monitoring my internet connection by running a speed test every 30 minutes and then displaying it on a nice Grafana dashboard. And this is where I saw the real problem. My internet speed was fine, though it was sometimes going to about 400 megabits during the night, but the main thing that caught my eye was the latency. How could it be at 10 milliseconds? From this, I also saw that HTTP requests took a while to load as well. Now, there could be several problems with this. One, my ISP could simply be having a bad day and my internet connection is unstable, or my router is simply overloaded with the amount of clients in my network, a basic home network wouldn't have 40 wired devices connected to it and another 30 Wi-Fi devices as well. So I knew that the problem might be that the router is too weak to handle all this load and I do have 150 gigabytes of RAM and a 16 cores lying around unused in my server. Okay, a router doesn't really need that much resources, but this did give me an idea. My current router is like a pet. It's restricted by default, really simple, and a lot of maintenance is required when something goes wrong. However, 
if I build the router myself and use highly documented software, I can freely configure any part of the router to my needs and have it be part of my cattle infrastructure. Back when I bought Nucleus, I specifically made sure that two of the four Ethernet ports in the server can be passed through to a virtual machine. And I already have a PFSense virtual machine created from a couple of months back. Now that you know the context of my decision, let's get to actually doing it. When I was talking to my ISP yesterday, I asked him if my router supported bridge mode, which, from its name, bridges my fiber connection to an Ethernet jack, which I then plug into the WAN port of my PFSense VM, and thankfully, my router does support it. In that call, they also told me that I have to call them when I want them to switch it to bridge mode, and that once it's done, I could plug the Ethernet cable into my WAN port, and I would be returned my public IP address. Great! So to start off, we first need to call my internet service provider and tell them that we need to switch my router to bridge mode. I already configured my PFSense virtual machine to the correct ports, and hopefully it will just work in the first try. <laughs> Emphasis on hopefully. Um, hi, I, t I called you guys yesterday and you told me that in order to switch my router to bridge mode, I would need to contact you. Uh, so, can you please tell me your location first? Um, okay, my location is... Do you know, um, are you gonna do it now or when will I know that it's in bridge mode? So, it's, um, it's done. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Welcome to my server room again. This Ethernet cable is coming from downstairs in my room all the way up here to my servers. Right now our problem is that I cannot access my server. This is gonna be, this is not that good. What I did now is this LAN cable is going into my Dell switch, which is the LAN port coming from my server, and then the WAN port, which is coming from downstairs into the first one. So let's boot up PFSense and let's try and boot up the virtual machine and see if it gives me uh, an IP address. I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing, honestly, but if it works, it works. That should work. Now if I access HTTP colon slash slash one into one six eight one dot one, it's loading. Oh my god, it works! I think the default credentials were admin at Oh yeah. Let's just do a quick Google search if Google works. It doesn't. I'll be right back. Oh, so the username is admin and the password is pfsense. That worked. Welcome to pfsense software next. At the home page, that is my IP address now. Does it have access to the internet? Ping Google. And it doesn't. I guess I'm gonna need to call my ISP for this. I'm gonna go for now and I will get back to you once I get all this working. It's been a couple of days and I'm happy to tell you that I got it all working. One of the main problems was actually getting port forwarding working, but that was easily resolved by changing the default port in which the PFSense web interface runs so that port 80 and 443 would be available. Now, I can finally change DNS servers, I can finally configure a proper firewall, I can finally configure my own external VPN, I can do so much stuff that my old router couldn't do or was too slow to do, and I'm happy, the virtual machine has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is insane for a router, but it's practical because let's say a thousand people join my site, PFSense could just handle it with no problems. It's way more powerful than my router, and did I also mention, you can automate things in PFSense, what? 
Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Please tell me what you think about this set design, even though it's just my desk. And I'm also sorry for not uploading much. Like I said earlier in the video, I had exams, but now I have time to make videos sometimes. This video has been on the backbone for about three weeks and I just finally got started to making it. And also, I'm still gathering information for the final XPS 13 video. But till then, thank you so much for watching. Comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you later.